What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to create this neon city scene. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need in the description down below. You only need the canvas size and the palette for today's design. Everything else is built in to Procreate. Now I'm also going to show you how to create a different variation of this design as well right at the very end where we can create this little tweaked variation as well. So be sure to hang around till the end to see how you can go about making that variation. Now make sure to hit the subscribe button down below for weekly tutorials, but if you want to get access to a catalogue of over 60 and three more added every single month, there's a link to my Patreon in the description down below if you want to come and support the channel. And with all that said, let's get started. So once you've created your canvas, the first thing we're going to do is want to change our background color. So if we go up to our layers and we go into today's palette, we're going to go ahead and we'll grab this color here in the bottom right of the palette. That'll give us this sort of dark navy color that we can work off of in the background. We're then going to go ahead and go to our actions. We're going to go ahead and go to canvas and we're going to go ahead and turn on the drawing guide. Now, if we go ahead and edit the drawing guide, we're going to use the option of perspective. So if I just set my line color to something quite bright, such as white, and then go to the option of perspective, we can pick where we want to drop this dot. Now, I want to go ahead and drop it roughly here. Now, one thing we're going to have to somewhat manually do is make sure that these corner lines here look pretty identical to each other. They don't need to be pixel perfect, but something like that, just to make sure that they're pretty close to each other in terms of the gaps. That way we know it's quite centered as well. So we've got all this vertical space up here to be working with and we've got our ground down here. So something like that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. And then once we've done that, we're gonna to go to our layers and on the empty layer, we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the middle color on the far right column. We're gonna to go to our selection. We're gonna go ahead and use the option of rectangle, but we're also gonna go ahead and use the option of color fill. So if we turn, turn that on, it's gonna go ahead and use the color that we've got selected. So just create a box to start with that's going to go across our horizontal axis there, which is the blue line. And so you filled it all in. Once you've got sort of a rough space, just go straight to your cursor. You can zoom in and you can grab the freeform option and just adjust it so it hits that horizon line like so. It doesn't have to be pixel perfect. It's going to be blurred anyway. And make sure, of course, it fills up the bottom area. And tap on your cursor when you're done. So the next step I want to go ahead and do is create the yellow lines that run down the center there of the road itself. So we're going to go ahead and go to our colors and we're going to grab the middle color in the first column. We're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to the option of painting and we're going to use the stucco brush. Now the brush size is set to 10% and all we're going to do is just simply draw in a line. So this is our center line here. We're just going to go ahead and draw in a line just beside it. Pop your finger on the screen as well to make sure it's nice and straight, something like this, and then draw up it again just to fill it in with a bit more color. So a nice straight line like that. And then just leave a gap and draw in another line just beside it. So straight up, something like that. And then again, just go over it once more just to give it a bit more pain. So of course, now what we wanna go ahead and do is adjust this. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our cursor. We're gonna use the freeform option and we're just gonna grab the top middle node and drag that down, squish it right down and then we're gonna drag it out so it reaches the edge of the canvas. Now at this point, what we've gotta do is we've gotta distort this in a way that matches up to the perspective line. So we're gonna grab distort and we're gonna go ahead and look here and we've got this line here, this is my guide here. So really we've got our center line here and then two across on either side is our outer sort of guide. So we're gonna take a look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my node and I wanna move this to the vanishing point in the center, something a bit like that and then also make sure it just sort of runs quite parallel to that point. And then we'll just do the same over here. We'll just grab the top left node now, really get that perspective going into there, but also drag it outwards a little bit so it matches on either side. Make sure this bottom line here is nice and horizontal, otherwise you'll end up with a little bit of a skew to it. And then what we wanna do is just drag the bottom node down a little bit more we don't really want this effect where we've got the paint sort of distorting quite so much. And that's simply because we've gone ahead and made our vanishing point right in the distance. So if I grab the middle node at the top, bring it a little bit closer, it will get rid of a little bit of that distortion. If I then switch back to freeform, we can jump between the two. I can grab this node here, drag this out a little bit more and it will continue with the same perspective we created. It's just gonna stretch out the paint a little bit more. So as I sort of drag this down every single time, 
We'll just go in until the point where it looks a little bit something like this and tap on your cursor when you're done. So that way your lines then just run off and disappear into the distance, but they also now match up to our perspective. And we've got that nice sort of eroded look to the lines, which I think looks really cool. Now what we're also gonna go ahead and do is while we're on this layer, go to our adjustments. We're gonna to go to the option of Gaussian Blur, but something I haven't used very frequently is if we go up here to this arrow here, we can switch from the option of blurring the entire layer to just using a pencil to pick where we want to blur. Now by default, it goes to 60% and I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna to go to the brush and I'm gonna change it to airbrushing and I'm gonna use the soft brush. Now, the size doesn't really matter, but it's roughly around about 15% for me, so we're on the same page. And all I'm gonna do is just go left to right and I wanna blur this out at the closest point to us and also at the furthest point as well. So blur that out there and also blur that out in the distance a little bit like this. Because what I want to do is, as you would have seen in the intro, is this area here is our sort of area of focus. Everything else is out of focus and a little bit blurry. So we wanna sort of pull off that effect a bit. So I'm gonna blur that out a little bit down there. And this is just the only bit that's in focus. You can, if you want to, reduce your brush size even smaller and even blur these out even more down here. Just a little something extra like that. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is go to our layers. We're gonna go into the gray layer we made at the bottom. We're gonna to go to our adjustments. Gaussian blur, so this rectangle down here, and we're just gonna blur it. That will then blur out that horizon line and get rid of a lot of the definition in it so we can't tell where the horizon disappears. And if we tap on our adjustments when we're done, we'll have got rid of that. Next, let's go ahead and add in some more texture down here. So we'll go to our layers. Above our ground layer here, we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black. We're gonna to go to our brush library and we're gonna to go to painting again, making sure we're still on the same brush, except we're gonna max this out in size this time, 100%. And we're gonna go ahead and fill the whole screen. Now I'm actually gonna make that a little bit smaller than 100%. I want a little bit more definition in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and just fill in the entirety of the screen until you get the texture appear on the screen like so. Now, just like we did with the lines, we're gonna adjust this perspective wise just to match up to the ground below. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our cursor using freeform. If we grab the top node and just bring that down for a moment, just towards our horizon line, it will then sort of match up to the ground in terms of the height. But we need to go ahead and grab distort here and I'm gonna zoom out. You're gonna to need to wanna to grab the bottom right node and stretch that out and likewise the bottom left node. Now what we're trying to aim for as we do this, if we zoom in where our middle line is, we want this node here just to make sure every single time it sits on that point. That way we know that it nicely matches up and is nice and sort of symmetrical. So we're gonna to have to zoom out again and we're gonna to have to keep zooming out. So apologies if you can't really see it too well, but we're gonna keep stretching out the texture until when we zoom in, it sort of matches up and looks like it fits the space a little bit more. So I'm gonna go even wider than that. I'm gonna stretch it out again, even wider. And every single time, zoom in back in, just to make sure that this node here is nice and sort of on that center point. Now, roughly something like that will do. We don't need to sort of stress over it too much. So if we tap on our cursor, we've now got some nice texture on the ground here. And if we go to the layer, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and tap on it and we're gonna to wanna to clip it to the ground underneath. Now the next stage is to create the skyline. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna to go to our layers and we're gonna create a new layer. And we're gonna drag it all the way to the bottom of our layers, so it's underneath the ground here. With our color set to white by double tapping in the top left hand corner. We're gonna to go to our selection tool and we're gonna use the rectangle option, making sure that color fill is turned on. We're then gonna go ahead and create roughly around about sort of five to six, maybe even seven buildings. And these are gonna be our skyline. So the buildings, want to be sort of a similar sort of structure. You can make them slightly higher and some slightly wider. It's totally up to you. But we're going to also distort them to match the perspective as well. So we're going to create some buildings roughly like this and I'm going to create one more just on the end. It's a little bit taller. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is tap on our selection tool. We're going to grab our cursor. We're going to use the distort option and we're going to go ahead and adjust this to match the perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and we've got these lines here pointing towards the corner, but I'm going to use this one here as my level. So for example, I'm just going to make sure that that building there in the corner touches there. I'll grab the far right node here of my buildings. 
which then defines sort of the width. And then I can go ahead and grab this node here in the top right and drag it so it's on that line. If I do that all the way down and then make sure that that line is nice and straight, I've got a bunch of buildings all pointing towards our perspective point right in the distance there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it exactly like that. And that's all we need to do. So we're gonna go ahead and do exactly the same again. So for a moment, what I'll do is I'll go to my layer. I'll go ahead and just lower the opacity down a bit for a second, just down to about 20%. I'll create another new layer and we'll do it again. So we'll go to our selection tool and we will draw in another set of buildings. So we can make some a little bit skinnier, we can make some a little bit bigger. Bear in mind, because this is gonna be on the right side here, you probably want the far right building to probably be a little bit skinnier, just so that it doesn't sort of dwarf the rest of them. I'll create another build in here, quite a skinny one there. The gaps are all just gonna pretty much be the same, but you can make them ever so slightly different to one another. And maybe we'll make a nice smaller one in the distance. Then we'll grab our cursor, then we're gonna go ahead and do exactly the same. So we're gonna drag this over towards our perspective line, which is there, then grab the far left node and move it inwards just for a moment. And then we'll grab the top left node and just drag it down onto that line. And we left the other one nice and sort of transparent because we wanna make sure the gap in the middle is pretty even. So we don't wanna have like a side that's more uh, lopsided and there's a bigger gap. So this center line here is your guide. So I need to, for example, just move these buildings in the distance, probably in a little bit more. Now these ones here are nice and large. You can make them go all the way off the screen if you want, but I quite like that there's a little gap. It's quite nice. So I've got my city buildings there. I can go ahead and tap on my cursor and we have our buildings all pointing inwards. Then we can go ahead and bring the opacity back up of the other one on the left hand side. If we then go ahead and we tap on the top one and we merge it down, we'll put them all on the same layer and we'll go ahead and tap on the layer and we will invert it to black. We'll then go ahead and we're gonna add in some blurring to this and I'm gonna do it now so we don't have to do it later. So we're gonna go to our adjustments. We're gonna go to Gaussian Blur and we're gonna swipe from left to right and we're gonna add in a 5% Gaussian Blur or four, let's actually do four. Tap on our adjustments when we're done. So let's now go ahead and move on to creating the traffic lights and the street lights as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers and we're gonna create a new layer right at the very top. We're gonna to go to our brush library and go to calligraphy and the monoline brush. And what we wanna do is the right hand side is our priority. We're gonna go ahead and create a nice street light and traffic lights. So my brush is just currently set to about 3%. It's just a simple size to start with, that's no problem. And we wanna position sort of the bottom of the street light here, for example. Drag that up and pop our finger on the screen. Now I'm gonna go for roughly something around about this sort of height. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just make sure that the top is the skinniest point and I'll draw in a ever so slightly diagonal line down towards the bottom so it's thicker towards the bottom and a little bit thinner at the top. Then from this point here, I'm just gonna introduce this line here so I can see it as a guide. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in a diagonal line roughly around about here, which is gonna be our street light. So out to here, just hold your pen down for a straight line and draw that out to about here. I'm gonna put my finger on the screen to get that correct angle so I can match it up later. And then I'm gonna go ahead from that top point, draw in a horizontal line a little bit Pop my finger on the screen to make sure it's nice and horizontal. And then on the end, I'm just gonna go ahead and simply draw in like a rounded rectangle, basically. Just a rounded rectangle. We'll take a look at the size when we zoom out and see if it's good for size, and it is. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw in the traffic lights. So we're gonna go ahead and draw in another diagonal line, roughly around about here, up to this sort of point again. And I'm gonna match the angle that is above if not slightly more of an angle. Let's just do it ever so slightly off from that. And then we wanna go ahead and draw in the horizontal line that's gonna go all the way across and hold our traffic lights that's gonna go all the way right towards that center line of our canvas. Then we're gonna to go to our selection tool again and using rectangle and color fill turned on yet again. So we're gonna go ahead and draw in a rectangle in the middle for our middle traffic light. And then we'll draw in two more as well, one either side Try to match them up as best you can in terms of size, but it's no biggie if they're ever so slightly off from each other. So a little something like this, and we've got our traffic lights. 
Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to duplicate this, flip it so we can put it on the opposite side. So we're going to go to our layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it, go to our cursor, flip it horizontally and move it across. Now of course we don't want them parallel to each other because there's a junction of some sort in the middle or a crossing. So we're going to go to our uniform option, we're going to scale it down in size and then move it so that the traffic light is a little bit further back and a little bit lower and likewise a bit smaller. So we want it to be smaller but just so that it is a little bit further back as well. That way we get the impression that there's a bit of distance between the two of them. This one is the dominant one. We can even make this one a bit smaller yet again if we want to, just to really push it back in the space. And you can just put it a little bit lower and that will pull off that impression. Now we're gonna go ahead and duplicate the top of this just so that we've got it for the large lights that are gonna sit over here. So we're gonna to go to my layer, grab the one on the right hand side, this one here. I'm gonna to go to my selection tool. I'm gonna to turn off color fill and I'm just going to draw a box around the top of this here and just grab it. We'll go to the option here of copy and paste. So it's copied it, it's pasted it onto a new layer and I can grab my cursor. Using the uniform option I can scale this up in size and I can move it up to the top right here. So this is just going to sit at the top of our scene. It's a light that's a little bit closer to us and we can make it even bigger just so we can pull off that impression a bit more. And then I'm going to go to the layer swipe it to the left and duplicate it, grab my cursor and flip it horizontally. And if you turn on snapping, easier with magnetics turned off, just drag it over to the left hand side so it's parallel, you'll see three blue lines and then we'll tap on our cursor when we're done. So that is all of the items we need for the lighting. We're then gonna go ahead and tap on each layer and invert it to black. So tap on the layer, tap on the layer and invert it, which is that one there, tap on it and invert it and tap on it and invert it. So it's now back to black. So now at this stage, we've got everything we need in order to start adding in the lighting. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new layer at the top of our layers. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the green in the bottom left of the palette. We're gonna to go to our brush library and we're gonna go into the option of luminance at the very bottom. And we're gonna use the light pen set to a size of 21%. This pen is pressure sensitive, so if you press really light, you'll get a thin line, and if you press really firm, you'll get a nice big chunky line. But you can see there, there's a nice glow to it. Now for a moment, I'm just gonna to go to my layers and turn off my city in the background, because then I can see all of my traffic lights. And these three here on the right-hand side, we're just gonna draw in a circle here, press with a little bit of pressure as well, to add in our three green lights. If we zoom out, we've got some lighting starting. We're then gonna to go to our layers and we're gonna create a new layer and drag it underneath all of the street lights. We're then gonna to go to our colors and switch it to red in the top left of the palette. And where the red light would be at the top of here, we're just gonna draw in a circle again and just show that even though we're on the wrong side of it, there's a little bit of lighting there. So draw in a circle just as you did just before at the very top obviously to show that there is a red light facing the opposite direction. Now going back to our layers and going to the top layer again, I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab this left color here to the middle of the second, or middle of the first column. I'm gonna zoom in on the top of my lights and we're gonna go ahead and draw in a little glow from our traffic lights or street lights. So a little line underneath will do the trick. So a little line under here, a little something like that. We'll move across to the opposite side and we'll go ahead and add in a little line under there. And we'll go ahead and add in another line under there. Keep it small, keep it nice and tidy for a moment. Less is more in the end with this particular design. So just bear that in mind. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our layers and jump back down to the red lights that we had. We're gonna go back to our colors and making sure we use red again in the top left of the palette. And now we're just gonna go ahead and draw in some tail lights. So with our lights here, I'm gonna go ahead and draw in some just simple rectangles here for the back of the car. We don't need to draw the car itself, but just some simple rear lights on the back of our car in a line. That's fine. You don't have to make the lines perfect either. Just a little something like that. The only thing I wanna then do is just go to my selection tool, make a box around them, grab my cursor, just so I can just make sure that the angle's correct. I wanna make sure they're a little bit more straight than the ones I just drew in. So a little something like that. 
and then tap on my cursor. So they're a little bit perfect sort of horizontally. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our colors and grab the middle color in the second column and we're gonna draw in the headlights on the opposite side. So there's gonna be a little bit of a distance. So you wanna to start to think about maybe making your headlights a little bit smaller, just than the last ones we made. And we're just gonna draw in the headlights of the vehicles on the opposite side of the road. So there we go, just that easy set of lights over there. We'll just do enough to pull that off. And then we wanna kind of show that there is a couple more vehicles in the distance, so we can maybe draw in like some smaller dashes and make sure to really do make sure that they are a little bit smaller. You don't want them quite as big as the ones in front because otherwise it's gonna ruin the perspective a little bit. And you can create little dashes here and there, just tiny little ones in the distance as if this car's in every lane, just queued up, ready to go. Just a little something like that. What we can then also do is go ahead and go to our colors. We can grab red and we can go ahead and create some cars in the distance where we can see their tail lights. So just a couple of extra cars in the distance, just nice and blurred out. So maybe even don't do the right lane, maybe just chuck a car in the, in the further distance in that lane. And then just create little tiny dashes, just, just little lights in the back there, just to give the impression that there's more vehicles. You can even start to really cram them in just to show sort of how crammed they are right back there. Maybe cars moving in and out of lanes potentially, just something going on in the distance that we can't really see, but it's just enough that it just adds a little bit more to the scene. So we've got traffic all the way up and down. What we can then also do is add in potentially some more red lights, even some more green lights. So for example, in the distance, we may have some lights up in the distance. So using this, we can see the perspective line that it sits on. We can maybe draw in a red light here. I can see where that line would sit there. And I can see that on this line here, that's roughly where all my green lights sit. So I can draw in some lights like that. I can switch my color back to green and then draw in some tiny little specks of green in the distance, just teeny tiny little green dots in the distance following the same perspective line that those lights are on. You can see they're on this line here. And so we can just drop them in there. And we can even do the same on this side. We can go ahead and maybe draw in some very, very light green dashes. So roughly I can see the line that it would sit on. So maybe there's one here and just really, really light because we wouldn't be able to see them too much. They're glows from the opposite side, of course, of the, the lights themselves, but it's just a little bit of extra scene and environment. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in the buildings again. So if we go to our layers and turn on the buildings, we can now see them. And we're gonna introduce some windows. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our colors. We'll grab the middle color in the second column. And we're gonna add in some environments such as lights and windows and shop fronts, etc. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is, over here, for example, I've got this building. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe draw in a front window. So like there's a window here, a window here of maybe a shop less is really more in this instance. So bear in mind when we blur it, there's gonna be lines straight down. Now I don't wanna to do too much in this space here because I don't wanna go ahead and compromise my lights of my tail lights here. So I can, for example, add in a big shop front here and this will look good because it's behind the traffic light here. And then I can go ahead and draw in some windows above. So maybe one here, maybe one here, keep them skinny. Again, less is more. Let's just add in a window here, maybe another one here and another one here. And let's then jump up towards the top of the building. I'm just gonna sort of overlap that perspective line a little bit, but just a little something like this. Then I'll move across a building. And again, I'll bear in mind the blurs that are gonna happen underneath. So I'll draw in a couple of top windows. I'll maybe draw in one in the middle here. I'll draw in another one here. And all they are are just lines up and down the screen. Maybe another one here, cause I can see how that will work out there. And I can add in a sort of shop window towards the bottom, that's fine. We can maybe add like two at the bottom and then just leave that. Again, less is more, especially when we get further back here because we don't really want a ton of light in here because if you think about it, what we put here is gonna get blurred here. So we just wanna add in a little bit of light but nothing too crazy. And because the buildings are getting further away from us, we can go ahead and make sure that these are a little bit skinnier as well in terms of the, the rooms and their windows. And I just quite like this light pen effect for this because it's nice and simple and we don't have to sort of worry about it too much. Now, if you're struggling to see the buildings in the background, potentially go ahead and turn off uh, any layers in front of it, but 
just add in the odd tiny little window in the background there and they want to be nice and small really really thin and just a few we don't want to add in too much back there and I'm most definitely not going to add in any shops all the way back there because it really will add in quite a lot of light the only one you would maybe think about is one here and you might just about be able to see that but I'll leave it just as a sort of consideration and a couple of windows back there so just a simple simple set of windows take a look at it and then reflect it on the opposite side so we'll move over to here we'll go ahead and maybe add in and again another shop down at the bottom here so I'm going to go ahead and introduce some very large windows with maybe a large you know, door at the beginning and we don't really care about the definition of the building as such in the shop front we're just just giving that that nice bokeh effect that the camera who's shooting the photo here the cameraman or woman is just really blurring out the scene in the distance so I'm just going to add in some more windows here and another shop front at the bottom and using the perspective lines just to guide where I put the windows and again I want to do less than I probably should because you just don't want to overdo it especially when we get into the reflections so you can tell that I'm just trying to make that point very clear because I've done it in my practices so just uh, trust me on that one so let's go ahead and just add in a few more down the end here just a few little windows here and there adding in a few just so we know that they're buildings though we do want to sort of have a, a little bit of light going on we want to show that this is obviously a lit up city but we just want to bear that in mind that in the distance less is most definitely more so a little something like that and then again make sure that both sides are nice and balanced take a look at your scene make sure you're happy with it and then at this stage, let's go ahead and now move into adding in some reflections. So we'll go to that layer that we were just working on. We'll swipe it to the left and we'll duplicate it. We'll also go ahead and go up to the green layer. So the top set of lights at the top here, swipe that to the left and duplicate it too. And drag one of those layers down towards either one of the layers that we duplicated at the bottom set of lights. And once you've got a bottom set of lights, so these ones here and the green ones at the bottom here, just tap on one at the top and merge it down so they're all on one layer. So what you should have is your original set of top lights, your back lights and then a layer with both of those on. If you go to your cursor then and we go to the option of flip vertical, we move that down. We're going to go ahead and then add in some motion blur and just really create some cool reflections. Now for a minute obviously a lot of the angles are a little bit skewed for example these reflections need to be a lot closer to there but for the basis of this design we're just going to go ahead and make sure that the tail lights are all nicely aligned and based off of some of the effects that we're going to add in anyway we should be able to adjust them to fit so once you've sort of matched up the tail lights there on the right we're then going to go ahead and go to our adjustments we're going to go to motion blur and we're going to drag down in a vertical fashion and so once you get up to something fairly large around about that 45 percent mark all of those lines are just nicely blurred. Now we've got some really nice tail lights in here. We've got some greens in there as well from those lights at the top. And now it doesn't really matter so much because you've got so much distance and travel with the lines. So 44% for me. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go to my cursor. I'm gonna use the distort option and drag the bottom right node out ever so slightly to the right and the bottom left node out to an equal amount until this node here in the middle is in the center again, just to add a little bit of angle to those lines. And then I'm gonna tap on my cursor when I'm done. Now they look awesome right now, but what we're also gonna do is we're gonna to go to the layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, go to your options or adjustments and go to Gaussian Blur and swipe from left to right. And we just wanna really add in a good more chunk of color, but with a blurrier effect. So up to something around about 10 to 15% will do it. I'm gonna to roll towards the 11% mark and tap on my adjustments. And then I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to go ahead and grab the top one that we didn't blur, tap on its blend mode and change it to the option of vivid light. And once we get down to there, we're going to start to see those colors just really pop. Like they're getting so warm. We've got some more greens in here. It looks awesome. Now, one thing we need to now do is if we go to our layers and we go to the set of lights that we created there at the top, we now need to go ahead and go to our adjustments. We need to go to the option of Gaussian Blur again, and we need to tap on the option again at the top to switch it to the pencil variation and go to the brush library and switch it back to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. 
because we need to go ahead and tone down some windows to add in variation, but also this helps with the lighting later on. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and just, just go over the top of here. Now my brush size is set to about 4%. I'm gonna go over this light a little bit and sort of smudge it out. I'm gonna go ahead and smudge out this one here too. I wanna to create variation in the light. We don't want them all the same. I'll go ahead and blur this one out too. And we're just gonna randomly pick a few lights here and there that we can nicely blur out to create that variation in the lights, some slightly brighter than the other. We're not gonna do it quite so much towards the bottom, but we'll create these lovely blurred out lights here and there. Then maybe reduce your brush size down to something really small so that in the distance here, you can pick and choose a few different lights that you wanna just break down a little bit. So some are nice and bright, but some are just varied. And repeat on the opposite side. So zoom in, go over the top of some of these lights here. Pick especially the ones in the distance. You may wanna to start to think about toning them down a little bit. And then these buildings here, we'll just go ahead and increase the brush size again. And we'll go ahead and just blur out this one here, for example. I'll go ahead and blur out this one here underneath the light. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna blur out a few up here underneath the light because we have some effects that we need to add in. So we need a little bit of blur in there. And I'll probably go ahead and add one here too, just to tone them down a little bit more. Now the scene's really coming together. We've got some really nice lighting. The next stage is to go ahead and emphasize a few of the lights in the scene. So what I mean by that is if we go right to the top of our layers and create a new layer, I'm gonna go ahead and using the soft airbrush still, I'm gonna to go to my colors and I'm gonna grab the green here, at the bottom of the first column. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna make a really good big glow. So I'm gonna go even bigger than that. I'm gonna go up to about 10% and tap a few times on the center of the light to really add in a huge amount of glow. Nothing too solid though. You don't want anything like this. You want this over here on the right. So you want to tap maybe a few times with lighter pressure just to build up towards that and a few extra levels of color will look great. Likewise, we'll also go to our colors and grab the red. And once you've got red, we're going to go ahead and emphasize these tail lights. Now for a minute, they're going to go ahead and get a little bit sort of softer, especially towards the center. But of course, I've got something up my sleeve ready to go. So we're going to add in some extra red here. We're then going to go to the blend mode of this layer, tap on it and change it to add, which is really going to emphasize those lights even more. We're then gonna to go to our layers and create another new layer and I'm just gonna boost the greens once more because they don't blur quite so well as the reds. So we're gonna go ahead and change the blend mode from normal to add. We're gonna to go to our colors and grab the green in the bottom left of the palette. Maybe make the brush size around about 6% this time and get tapping away on that central light just to really blow them out. I want this really beautiful bokeh effect like a camera would give and just something like that it looks beautiful. It's really nice bright lights. Then what we're gonna do is go to our layers. We're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna go ahead and drag it underneath these green and red extra lights at the top here, but not in front of our lights themselves. You can see there the street lights turning on and off. So we're then gonna go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the middle color in the first column. We're gonna go ahead and make our brush size around about sort of 9%. And I'm gonna introduce a very light glow, really light with your pressure. We wanna create a beam down from this light here, down towards the ground. Really light, nothing too solid. Just make sure that it fans out at the bottom a little bit. So fan that light out at the bottom and also increase your brush size then to about 16% and just tap on the light a few times just to create a big glow around it. If anything, we could probably go bigger than that. Let's go bigger than that. Let's go to about 22% and create a little few taps just to really show that light. Move across to the right and tap again. So a couple of times, really light, build up your pressure so you get a similar glow. Then reduce it down to about sort of 13% and create that, if not smaller again, sorry. Let's go down to about 11 and create a light beam down towards the middle. Really, really light with your pressure and that's quite key. And just create that beam of light down onto the street. Now, if we go to the actual layer and we change the blend mode from normal, we change it to color dodge, it's gonna introduce these nice warmer tones from the light at the top here. And we're gonna build on top of that shortly as well. So for a moment, they're gonna sit like that. <coughs> so 
So that's a few of the lights that are facing us. Let's also emphasize some of the lights that we can't see. So if we go to our layers and we go ahead and we've got the street lights here that sit underneath. So they're actually like all the lights on this top layer. I'm gonna create a new layer in front of it. I'm gonna to go to my colors and I'm gonna grab red again. And our street lights here have completely disappeared with all the lighting happening. Now what I wanna do is with a rough sort of 7% brush size is just tap away a few times just to emphasize that red light and just to show that it is on. And yes, just because we can't see it, doesn't mean that it's not gonna create some sort of ripple of light. And that will really boost that area of the scene. Next, what we're gonna go ahead and do is just emphasize a little bit more of these street lights here. Now, we're gonna go ahead and go down to our layer that's got our yellow lines on that was on the street. And we're gonna create a new layer in front of it. We're gonna go to our colors and we're gonna grab the middle color in the second column. Our soft air brush still. Now this is roughly around about 13 to 15%. We wanna be really light with this and just, just draw in a beam down, just a little bit of light. Now because we already added a layer underneath with the color dodge, this is really gonna get boosted quite a bit. So we wanna just lightly fan out a beam down from our street light and emphasize that there is a lot of lighting coming from it. So I've just pressed really lightly in a straight line up and also tapped just underneath the beam. And you can see the difference between the two sides. We're gonna do the same on this side. We're gonna draw in a beam down towards the ground, all the way down, and then just tap away a few times at the bottom of it, and just increase that beam more and more with that color. And we'll then go ahead and zoom in. We'll bring the size down of our brush down to about 5%, tap away a few times underneath this street light, and again, sort of draw in a beam down. Now, that's probably a little bit too strong and a bit too big, so I'll go down to 4%, I'm just going to draw in a beam of light down from our street light and brighten it up right behind it. So a little something like this. And we'll do the same over here. We'll tap away a few times underneath. We'll draw in a beam down right towards the ground and just fan that out a little bit towards the bottom. Then we're going to go ahead and go to our adjustments. We're going to go to hue, saturation and brightness and we're going to drop the saturation down to 15% so that it's going to be a little bit whiter, a little bit cooler and we will increase the brightness up to about 60%. And we're gonna tap on our adjustments when we're done. Now at the minute, the sky is a little bit off, so we're gonna to go to our layers and we're gonna go right down towards our city, create a new layer, and drag it underneath the city at the back. We're then gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black. We're gonna increase our size up to something fairly large, about 25%, and just darken up the top area and blend it down just towards this area here. So you've got a little bit of this sort of blue color still sat in here. Then what we're gonna do is go to our colors and on the same layer, we're gonna grab red. We're gonna reduce the brush size down to maybe about 15% and essentially just sort of bring in a little bit more light. I'm gonna go even smaller, sorry, 8%. And just bring in some more light as if there's far, far, far more lights in the distance and the lighting's just running off into the distance. Likewise, we'll go to our colors and we will go ahead and grab the middle color in the second column and we'll just introduce a little bit of that color here on the left hand side just so we can see that there is a lot more lighting in the distance then what I'm also going to go ahead and do is if we go to our layers underneath our street lights we've got this red layer here for our lights at the top I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to go ahead and then with my color set to the middle color in the second column same brush, we're just gonna tap away on these headlights and kind of emphasize those a little bit more. So adding in a lot more blur, tapping on them a few times just to add in some extra areas of lighting and just really emphasize the color of them. Then go to the layer, tap on the layer and change the blend mode to add. But you may need to go ahead and reduce it down. It's totally dependent on how hard you press. Mine there are looking a little bit too bright so I'm gonna go ahead and reduce mine down and just bring that down into a little bit of a safer space around about sort of 60%. Now what we also need to do is add in some blurring on the street lights, because of course at the minute they look a bit odd. So if we go to our layers and we go to the street light on the left here, it's a little bit further back. So we're gonna go to our adjustments and go to Gaussian Blur. And we're gonna blur this one out to say five or 6%. And I'm happy with the 5% marker on this one. Then go to your layers, go to the street lights on the right, go to your adjustments and go to Gaussian Blur, but blur this one out a little bit less. So you can go to either three or 4%, it's totally up to you. I like the look of three, it gives it a little bit more definition and it's a bit closer to us anyway. And then tap on your adjustments when you're done. 
that's now added them into the scene a little bit more because they now have a little bit of gaussian blur to them and again our focus is just here now what we can do at this point is actually get rid of our perspective guide so if you go up to your actions canvas and turn off your drawing guide we don't need those lines on at the minute what we then want to go ahead and do is add in some extra effects down here on the ground so if we go to our layers we're going to go down to the black texture that we added on the ground and swipe it to the left and duplicate it the bottom one out of the two tap on it and invert it so it's now flip it to white now we're going to change the blend mode now we're going to go ahead and grab our cursor and we're just going to tap a few times at the top one two and maybe three will do the trick then go to your layer change the blend mode from normal to lighten then go to your eraser tap on your eraser and grab the soft airbrush and with a brush size of maybe 22 percent we can go ahead and blur out the bottom here so basically getting rid of those crispy details and likewise from the top we want to focus these edges of the sort of concrete and whatnot here on the ground the tarmac just towards this edge here and I'm going to go ahead and blur out the edges as well just to make sure that the center here is the only thing with those crispy details next what we're going to do is go to our layers we're going to go ahead and create a new layer in front of our texture here at the bottom we're going to go to our colors we're going to grab the red and again with the soft airbrush we're going to reduce it down to a small size and we're going to take a look at the ground and we're just going to add in some purposeful reflections underneath our tail lights here so we're just purposely getting in there and adding in some extra areas of red and then you can go ahead and maybe sort of just lightly fade them out really sort of add in some extra color i'm very light with my pressure at this stage and then also going to go in with my color and grab the middle color in the second column reduce the brush size probably down to about two percent again and just blur out the bottom here of our tail uh, sorry headlights so blur them out a little bit underneath just sort of showing that there is even more color we're trying to just build it up and build it up adding in some extra areas of reflection just underneath those there and then what we can try to do is sort of give the impression that there's areas of water on the surface so with your brush maybe around about one to two percent probably reduce your opacity as well down to about 50 just lightly sort of stroke in on the ground here some areas you just kind of you can make some more sort of defined like that you can just add in some areas of water just on the surface just like puddles you can add some in these areas here especially in the darker areas they'll look great they'll look really sort of realistic so you can add some in there not too many but just enough and then move across again go to your colors and maybe grab red again and do the same thing over here maybe in your darker areas just introduce some more red just where the lighting is getting really reflective and here I've got a nice dark area I'm even going to go to my colors and switch it to the green in the bottom left and just think about where those reflections drop in just adding in like the puddles of water are just going to reflect some more green in here just a little something like this and these are just those extra little wet patches that are going to look really nice on the ground and really add in some extra cool details now one thing i want to now do is if we go to our layers we created some beams that drop down here on the left hand side that we made just towards the bottom here we made these lighter beams here we're going to go ahead and tap on them and we're going to lower the opacity down to something a little bit lower they're a little bit too strong in my opinion so i'm going to drop mine down to about 45 percent so they were the white beams they were just taking up a lot of the lighting in the scene and we want to focus it more towards the center here now the other thing i want to do is if i go to my layers i'm going to go right to the top i'm going to create a new layer i'm going to go to my colors and i'm going to grab the let's grab the middle color in the first column and where we've got our street lights with the soft airbrush we're going to go ahead and increase the size up to about four percent and the opacity 100 and just tap on these lights a little bit over here on the left hand side likewise the ones on the right hand side so these are the furthest lights we'll also do the same at the nearest ones here so we'll increase the brush size now because they're closer so maybe up to about nine percent and tap on these a few times just to add in a little bit of extra glow because we're going to go ahead and add the add effect to it so now we've got a little bit of extra light on them we go to our layer we tap on the opacity and change the blend mode from normal to add and that will just sort of boost those lights a little bit more that are hanging over the top of our street now there's actually a correction that i need to make and it's the ground down here if we go to our layers and we go to this white version that we made of it if we grab our cursor we actually just need to move it down not up so if we move it down 
it will go into the center and it will match up perfectly and then you can move it down a little bit more underneath it so if you go ahead and zoom out let's go ahead and align it perfectly underneath so align it perfectly under here and then tap a few times at the bottom so one and two and three that will then highlight the concrete in the correct way so the lighting's coming from the other way. So it's meant to move down rather than up. And then what we'll go ahead and do is just add in a general vignette. So we're gonna to go to our layers and go right to the top of our layers. We're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our actions. We're gonna to go to the drawing guide and turn it on, but we're gonna edit the drawing guide and change it to the option of symmetry and change the option here to quadrant. So that means there's four quadrants on the screen. If I drag my line here to white, you'll be able to see now when I hit done, we've got these quadrants here. And if we go to our layers, this layer at the very top we just created says assisted. And if we go to our colors and double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black, using the soft airbrush around about 15%, I'm just gonna go ahead and just darken up very lightly around the bottom right edge and well as the right hand side here. It's gonna duplicate it on both sides and also towards the top as well. We wanna just kind of just trap in our design a little bit more towards the center and most definitely across the bottom as well. So just going across here about 20% and just sort of darken that up just a little bit more towards that bottom edge. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is make this look a little bit more realistic with a little bit of grain. So if we go to our actions and turn off our drawing guide for a moment. And another change I'm gonna make before we finish is if we go to our layers and we go down towards the yellow lines here, they are our center lines here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my cursor and I'm gonna go ahead and uniform them down a little bit. They're a little bit too large in comparison to the size of say the vehicles, etc. And so I'm happy that if I scale them down to this sort of level here, that they disappear and they're quite small when they get beside the car. So I'm just gonna make sure that they are in the center of our design as best I can, you know, something like this. Tap on my cursor when I'm done. So now what we can actually do is we can add in some noise, which will make this look a lot more sort of realistic and grainy. So if we go to our layers and we go right to the top, we go ahead and swipe with three fingers down and go to the option of copy all. If we then swipe with three fingers again and go to the option of paste, it's now copied everything it saw on the screen onto one layer. If we then go to our adjustments, we go to the option of noise. We're gonna change it to billows. We're gonna drag the scale to around about 33%. Drag the octaves up to around about 90. We'll increase the turbulence up to max. And we'll swipe from left to right on the screen until we add in 15% noise there at the top. If we then go ahead and tap on our adjustments, look at how much more detail it looks like it has as a design. It looks a lot more realistic, like you tried to take a photo at night. Now, one thing I wanna keep in the design as well, just so you can create multiple variations of this if you wish, is if you go to your layers and swipe it to the left and duplicate it, the top one, so you've got a copy ready to go. If you go to your adjustments and you go to the option of color balance, if you grab the mid-tones, you can then go ahead and mess around with these to create a different variation and a different style. So if I drag the cyan down, it will change some of those lights to that much more sort of blue hue to it. You can get really into those. You can drop the magenta down in here as well, just a little bit. And you can maybe increase the blues ever so slightly. And if you then go ahead and tap on your adjustments, so make sure to pause now if you want to match up to mine. But if you take a look at that, we've got a completely different vibe of a design, much more sort of neon-y, a little bit cyberpunky. But if I go ahead and turn off that version, we've got our original here. And if I pinch with two fingers and go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, please be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. I love seeing your finished creations. As always, make sure to drop a like down below and also subscribe for weekly tutorials. And a massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon who help make these videos possible. If you want to get access to a catalogue of over 60 exclusive tutorials with three added every single month, have your name featured in videos, sneak peeks and much, much more, hit the link in the description down below and come and show your support. And if you like this video, you'll probably like this one on the screen now. So as always, a massive thank you to you again. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.